news doesn't stop merely with Israel's strong military. It continues with Israel's strong economy. It's a tremendously strong economy. And I'll tell you, we made it stronger by moving Israel to free market principles, which unleashed the spark of genius embedded in our people into innovation, entrepreneurship. And there's a revolution taking place. This couldn't happen at the, the better time. Look at the 10 leading companies in 2006. Five energy companies, one, one IT company, Microsoft. And a mere 10 years later, 2016, a blink of an eye in historical terms. It's completely reversed. Five IT companies, one energy company left. The true wealth is in innovation. You know these companies, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook. Guess what? They all have research centers in Israel. All of them, major research centers. And they're not alone, there are hundreds more. And there's a reason, something is going on. It's a great change. It's, you wanna hear jargon? It's one sentence. This is a terrible sentence, but I have no other way to say it. It's the confluence of big data, connectivity, and artificial intelligence, okay? Did you get that? Yeah. You know what that does? It revolutionizes old industries, and it creates entirely new industries. So here's an old industry that Israel was always great in, agriculture. We're always good in agriculture. But now we have precision agriculture. You know what that is? See that drone in the sky? He's connected to a big database. And there are sensors in the field. And in the field, there's drip irrigation and drip fertilization. And now we can target with this technology the water that we give, the fertilizer that we give, down to the individual plant that needs it. That's precision agriculture. That's Israel. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, we were always good in water. I want you to see how good we are. So we recycle almost 90% of our wastewater. The next country, with less than 20% is Spain. You can see how Israel, what it does for water, what it does for the environment. So when you take these two things, agriculture and water, and the other technologies that we apply in both, we can change the world. We are. We are. I just heard about an African woman in Africa has to walk eight hours a day to give water to her children. Four hours one way to a well, four hours back. And a young Israeli company brought in this technology that improves on Moses. Remember Moses? He brought water from Iraq. They bring water from thin air. They bring water to Africa, to millions of people in Africa. Israeli technology. And I was just recently in India. That's my friend, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Great friend. I'm showing him cherry tomatoes. This is in Gujarat, India. This is Israeli technology. And what I heard there was fantastic. Farmers came from the region. There's an experimental farm there in a place where Israel gives technology know-how to Indian farmers. 65% Indian, 65 of India's population are farmers. And one farmer after the other gets up and says, because of Israeli technology, I've increased my crop yields and my income three times, four times, five times. Israel is changing the world in India, in Asia, in Africa, in Latin America, everywhere. These are the old industries. Now they're new industries. Israel is literally, how can I say this? Israel is literally driving the world. I'm talking about autonomous vehicles. Israel is a world leader in autonomous vehicles. 500 tech companies that sprang out almost instantaneously. And one of them, Mobileye, up there on the left, was just sold to Intel for a paltry sum of $15 billion. But the interesting thing is that Intel said to them, 
Here are the keys to our 30 worldwide autonomous vehicle businesses. You run it. Israeli technology is driving the world. And one last industry, there are many more, but one more that you're all familiar with. You have bank accounts? You should. Okay. Well, you don't want anyone hacking into them, right? Or into your uh, cars, or into the planes you ride. You need cyber security. Everybody needs cyber. Israel has become a world leader in cyber security. Look at how much they invest in the hundreds of Israeli startup companies. Tremendous companies. But here's another factor that you should know. Israel's population is how much? Who knows? Class? Eight million. It's closer to nine, but it's about between eight and nine million. That's correct. And what percentage of that is of the world's population? Oh, come on. It's one-tenth of one percent. So what percentage do we get of the world global investment in cybersecurity, in private investment in cybersecurity? We're one-tenth of one percent of the world's population, and we get a whopping 20 percent of global private investment in cyber. We're punching, we're punching 200 times above our weight. Not two times, not 10 times, not 100 times, 200 times above our weight. That's one heck of a punch. Very strong. Now here's how the dots connect. Because we have this tremendous capacity for security and intelligence, and because we have this tremendous capacity for civilian technology, for making the lives of people richer, safer, more productive. Many countries are coming to Israel because they want to share with us these benefits. And that creates the third great change, which is a flourishing of Israel's diplomatic relations around the world. You know, when I joined, when I joined the Foreign Service 105 years ago, as the DCM to this city, Washington, the number two in our embassy. I think we had about 80 or 90 countries with whom we had diplomatic relations. Now the number is 160, and there are very few countries left. By the way, what are we doing with Greenland? We gotta do something with Greenland. Uh, where's my advanced team? Go to Greenland, they must have some satellite needs or something that we could do there. But we are coloring the world blue. I've been to Africa three times in 18 months. I've been to South America, Latin America. Can you imagine in the 70 years of, of history of Israel, a prime minister of Israel never went south of Texas? I mean, I love Texas, but yeah, yeah, I do. But we went to Argentina. <coughs> we went to Argentina, to Colombia, to Mexico, and they say, come back, come back. We want more. That is changing. All these countries are coming to us. India, China, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, all of them. Azerbaijan, Muslim countries. First time I visited Australia, tremendous. Uh, far away though. So we're coloring the world blue. And you know what? The numbers, you remember people talked about Israel's isolation? You remember that? Israel's isolation? Pretty soon, the countries that don't have relations with us, they're going to be isolated. There are those who talk about boycotting Israel. We'll boycott them.